live. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Nightsfall, and you are now, hopefully, you are, uh, watching our homebrew 5e campaign. Uh, made in a world completely homebrewed by myself and all the cast of characters here. Uh, we are down one character today. They got called into work. You know, real life sucks. Real life is bullshit. But Bill's got to get paid. So, but, uh, so, Britt does know what's going to happen today. Uh, do I have a volunteer who can Jaeger Brit, by the way? Uh, uh, it sounds like Miyagi. Outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> First one to say something. Um, so, say oh. something, I'm giving up on you. <laughs> so, let's uh, go ahead and introduce uh, the cast of characters while I turn on a light so I'm not all in the shadows here. Uh, starting with the person who has multiple personalities today, Miyagi. Hi, I'm Josh. I play Miyagi, the Draconic Lineage Sorcerer, Divination Wizard, triple classed into Pact of the Celestial Warlock, um, and I will also be Yagirin Ath, so don't kill me, Brit. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Are you right. asking Brit not to kill you? You got the DM right here. No, I'm asking Brit. Brit's scarier. <laughs> <laughs> Until the game starts. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, you got history. I, I can't compete with that. So, uh, Next, we have our resident artist, Blue Mage Artist. Hey, y'all. I'm Blue Mage Artist. I play Ares. Started as a gnome. Now I'm a Goliath. So, yep, getting bigger and better as time goes on. And, uh, yeah, here we are. Does this mean you got a growth spurt or you hit puberty? Yep, growth spurt, gender change, it all happens. <laughs> <sighs> Next, we have the moral compass of the group, Hondir. The oh, original Hondir, I will like to say. We've had Hondir for months now, then some other streaming thing had a character named Hondir, spelled the exact same Wait. way. <laughs> Wait, that's a thing? Yeah, you didn't see uh, the last episode of Critical Role? They had a, a NPC named Hondir. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh my! <laughs> Not a Minotaur, but spelled the exact know, same way. I know, it, but that's still kind of funny. Hi, I play yeah. the original Hondir. Apparently, that's going to be my title this stream. <laughs> I deal with it. Uh, I am a life domain cleric who has to do pretty much all the healing. Well, to be fair, Miyagi does pump out a heal, heal every now and then. Heal too. <laughs> and last but not least, we have our stargazer of the group. Hi, I'm Heidi. I play Korishra. I am a uh, Kalashtar Druid, Circle of the Stars. Who's been very interested since the entire starscape has changed since uh, starting this adventuring. So when we last left off, the party went to this no-name town. Well, it has no name on the map. I'm sure it has a name somewhere. To find it in a state of decay and disarray. It was... As if nobody's been around. And then the people they met were talking rather oddly. Um, and wanting them to say to stay to share their stories. Upon a brief physical interaction, uh, Ares was assaulted mentally. And some of his memories ripped out of his brain. To which you were still minusing a d4 on everything Ares. While they followed a small red tendril coming from one of these people into the back room of this tavern, the entire place was as if they were stepping inside of a living creature. The walls pulsated. You could feel and even hear the beating of a heart traveling down this disgusting organic container. They find a heart with multiple tendrils going out. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Um, let's show the group what you all are seeing. And let's get a little bit of music going. And I think now is a, as good a time as any to roll initiative. Hooray! <laughs> Fuck me! 
have nat one for a two. Fun I times. An, I have advantage on initiative and still rolled the same number twice, but I forgot I get to add a d8 to it. Much better. 17. Uh, did you minus a d4? I have to minus a d4 for this too. Uh, let me double check. This is going to be a long night, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. That's okay. It's only a one, so 16. Yeah. Yeah. Ability checks, which is, this is an ability check. So 16 for Ares. Not 126, 16. <laughs> 126 initiative, my god. <laughs> yes. Corey, what'd you get? Uh, 22. 22. Uh, what did Ath and Meowgi get? I need to look at Ath. Well, if you can do it in Foundry, uh, the game's unpaused if you want to. If you do it. I'm if... still black screening. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Hang on. So. For whatever reason, still black screening. Ew. Meow, you got a. Sound effects are like gross. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Meow, you got a what? A 21. That's it. I'm just going to roll a 220 and then add Ats thing. We can't do Ats care to cheat on d and Beyond, so found is the only way to go with her. She's got a plus two. Oh, so she's got the same thing as I do. Okay. Alright. So you guys walking down this corridor and you see this thing quivering and pulsating veins going across it Corey, you are first to act uh i'm gonna completely disgusted and i think i will uh cast Guiding Bolt, and I'll do it at this level. So you're attacking a creature that has not attacked you or anything and is just standing there, correct? I thought that... We <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, go ahead. <laughs> giving you a moral conundrum right now. No, this is gross. No, <laughs> no it's this just... Gross. It's gross, it's different, kill it! No, ooh, nat 20 to hit. Plus 11, 31 to hit. If that doesn't hit, we're fucked. <laughs> How much is it to hit? 31. Just hits. What? Just kidding. Oh <laughs> I, I am lying. That 20 is an auto hit anyway. Uh, your damage? Uh, 29 radiant. Alrighty. That's not, is it, oh wait, is that doubled though? Let's see. Yes, 8d6 it rolled for you. Oh, so... Uh, yeah, because I cast it at 5th, so it would be, what, 58? Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Next is Ath. Or he just goes, boom. <laughs> okay. So, as a bonus action, she's going to rage. Now, I need to look at her... She at least get an idea because Foundry's being a bitch. Uh, why is it always me? Bonus action rage. How far away is this creature? Uh, this creature is. Oh, that's the wrong tool there. About 25 feet away. 25 feet away? Mm. Okay. I'm assuming she's making a beeline for it. Yep. Oh, I can't look at her character sheet. Shit. Okay. Well, she has two axes. One the Corpse Slayer and one the Mimic Cleaver. Okay. 
Those are a lot of different characters. Um, let's do Corpse Slayer. Alrighty. Okay. Oh, you have advantage because of Guiding Bolt. Absolutely. Okay. Now, my boundary's still not loading. What in the fuck? Or we can use the rolls that I did, if you'd like. Yeah. 22 well definitely Jaeger. hits. You might as well Jaeger her. Holy crap. My forge isn't working. Alrighty. Miyagi, you are up. Alrighty. Um, How much damage did I have to do? Uh, 20. Okay. One, two, okay. Uh, now how big is this room? Overall? Dimension uh, wise? It is not that large at all. Um, let me, I will give you... The workable room is about 30 feet. It might, okay. it's a little bit larger, but it's this thing has grown inside, so it's you have different like masses for better lack of a better term, or for lack of a better term for them in there that you can't actually climb up. So the workable room is about thirty feet. All right, um, I'm definitely gonna keep my distance. Um, how far away would I be, roughly? You, you are at this given point in time. Approximately 30 feet from it. 30 feet? Okay, that's good enough. I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt. Alright. Yes. Go for it. Excellent. 24 to hit. 24 definitely hits. And it rolled a natural 20 on. Why is it auto rolling every fucking time? What is going on? 24 hit. So let me just do 46. Okay. That's a measly 8 points of damage. 8 heard. Alright. Anything else? Nope. That's that's my turn. Ares, you are up. Wow. Okay. I'm going to run straight for it. Alright. I'm going to rage. Okay. And I'm going to punch it. Alrighty. Advantage. advantage. With advantage, yeah. Alright, we're doing advantage. Oh, let's see. Sorry, one moment. Subtract a D4. Uh, 28 to hit. 28 hits. Okay. Or 14 um, bludgeoning, I think, is what striking does. Yep. Yeah, bludgeoning damage, all right. 14 bludgeoning. <laughs> Hurt. Second, second attack. With advantage. If, if we were one more level, that would have been awesome, but we have a DM <laughs> that refuses to let us level, so... <laughs> Uh, 27. 27 hits. Alright. That's terrible. For... Oh, hold on, I forgot to add some damage. Um, so I'll just add 8... 14, uh, bludgeoning damage. I forgot to add the rage damage from before, so I just added it to this attack. Alright, 14 heard. And, um... No, fuck it. Action surge, and I'm gonna... Attack again. Go for it. That is a nat 20. Fuck As finally. your fists hit, it's disgusting squelching sound as you're tearing into this flesh and ooze. Great, right, perfect. So let's do this. Uh, 2d8. Actually, 3d8 because brutal critical means I get to add a weapon die. Yep. Wow, that was rage-inducing. Um, that is 16 points of bludgeoning damage, which 16. I 
next point, which on its next turn, because of the bleed effect from my census, it'll take uh, eight points of additional damage. Sounds good. Okay, next attack. Twenty-seven to hit. Twenty-seven hits. For thirteen bludgeoning damage. Thirteen bludgeoning damage. Heard. All right, and that will be the end of my go. All right, it is this creature's go. So, who's done the most damage to it? I think Ath. No, no. Miyagi came in kind of hard with his spells. <laughs> Hey, don't definitely say trying to protect I was, me. <laughs> I was gonna definitely say it's not Hundir, I haven't gone yet. That's a twenty-three to hit, uh Ares. Hey, hey you even know. You even knew that's twenty bludgeoning damage and twelve mm-hmm. psychic damage. Oh crap, I'm raging. Alright, so bludgeoning damage is halved. Alright, let me actually so that what, five? heal that and then do half damage there. Yep. No, it would be ten bludgeoning. And then 12 Psychic, then. That's half. So 22 altogether. Uh, you all see just this red ooze kind of slap out in a pseudopod and smack Ares across his chest as a second one is coming down towards him. That's a 23 to hit. That's no, I'm hit? sorry. That's a 25. Misses. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be 13 bludgeoning, that's already halved, and 17 psychic. Next, he's going to be using using his eat memories. One, two, three, four, five. So, Cory's one, Miyagi two, three is Hondir, four is Ath, and five is Ares. Six is a reroll. One is Cory. Is that a psychic thing? It is psychic. I have resistance. resistance. I get damage. Yep. It does not know that, though. Which is fine with me. Better me than someone else who doesn't have that. Exactly. All right. Oh, there it is. Finally. I need you to do a wisdom saving throw. As you feel memories of your past start to flood your mind and they are ripped out of your mind very violently 21 total 21 barely passes damn you take um half damage which is going to be 23 Um, I took like 900 points of damage that last round. I need you to calm down with your 23. <laughs> it was. It's half damage on a, 900. It's half, it's half I damage don't on a save. Heal you Hold on. That. Half. It's half, half damage from the save and half damage from resistance? Oh, yeah. So that's even less. You would take uh, quarter damage. So good call. 11. Good call. So let's do quarter damage. So that is 11, Corey, because it was 46. Okay. All right. Thank Hondir for that. Yes, I am. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Hondir. And Hondir, it is your turn. You thank me some more because, well, since it's a, it's a wisdom thing and I go last, I'm going to cast Speaking of Hope at third level. Speaking of Hope, very, very nice spell. Uh, I'm assuming that... You- okay. I'm assuming you're uh, designating your party members as targets, so that way, when you heal them, it's all max healed. Okay, um, this spell's not descriptive, so I think that any time someone uses a healing spell, they get max? Yes. Say specifically me. Yes, okay. anybody who heals, they get the max amount. However, you are concentrating on that spell now. It is a concentration spell. And everyone has advantage on wisdom saving throws for all one right. minute. All right, and... Um, on that, at the end of your turn, it's going to do a legendary action to strike at Ath with a pseudopod. That's only a 15 to hit, though. Her AC 16, so it misses. Corey, you're up. All right. Well, I'm 
going to go ahead and do Guiding Bolt again, since that seemed to work pretty nicely last time. Should give it another shot. Again at 5th level. Burn those spell slots. <laughs> I don't have another monster coming, I promise you. 15 does not hit, unfortunately. Um, just a second. Uh, I'm going to pull a lucky. Oh, lucky. There you go. And I will re roll. Twenty-four. Twenty-four hits. Another twenty. Twenty-eight damage. Amazing. Amazing. And for my bonus action, I don't know why I forgot this last time. Going into uh, starry form. Starry form. All right. Ath takes two wild swings. Unfortunately, none of them connect. Miyagi, you are up. Alrighty. Um. No. Okay. I am going to I'm gonna cast haste on Ares. That's what I'm gonna do. Outstanding. Haste on Ares. Does that complete your turn? Yes, yes it does. At the end of your turn, it's going to use another legendary action, and you see from the ground below you, another pseudopod start to form and goes to slap you. Okay. Ooh. That is a 23 to hit. Yeah, that hits. That is 12 bludgeoning. 13 Psychic. And I need you to do a concentration check. Con check. It's a pretty easy check for you, so... Uh, 21? 21, you make it. You maintain your concentration on haste. Just in time <laughs> for Ares. You feel... You see Miyagi throw up his hand at you as you feel the world start to slow down around you. It's like you had five shots of espresso and everybody else is just woken up. Nice. I'm going to use my bonus action for a second wind. All right. Um, and this one, because of that beacon of hope, I just get to do the max healing. Absolutely. So that is 12 healing. Mm hmm. All right, and then let's just keep punching this bitch. Go for it. Advantage. Yeah, you had advantage. advantage. Yes, because the last guy he bolt hit. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Ath would have used those up. That's okay. I don't think this is going to hit anyway. Even the one I just did? Yep, because Ath goes right after you. She missed, oh, yeah. but it's still, even with advantage, I rolled very low. All right, well, we'll say that I attack Reckless, and um, I still miss this first batch, because that's... I rolled a 16 and a 15. All right. Um, second strike. Really? 19? 19 hits. Okay. This thing is kind of big, so it's not very difficult to hit. It's definitely not armored. Uh, for 14 bludgeoning? 14 bludgeoning. Heard. Okay. This thing's starting to look really hurt. And then for my, um, whatchamacallit, my hasted attack. Yep. Twenty-five to hit. Twenty-five hits. All right, and then I'm going to use my gloves um, for the extra damage. Yep, for the ability forceful strike, mm -hmm. which lets me add up to two of my hit dice to my damage. Yep, and as you strike, you feel those 
metal studs that are dipped in uh, that have diamond tips. Um, you're striking with such force that it's for it's jamming back on your fingers, causing damage to your hands as well. What are my hit dice? D twelves or D ten if you use your fighter hit die. Mm, no, D twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Just that option, you know. Want to make sure you had your option. He like big dice. Um, twenty six uh, bludgeoning damage, and then I take thirteen just damage as a result of forceful strike. Alrighty. All right, and then that is my go. All right. Uh, this creature is definitely getting injured. He is going, or they. It's not even. You see their pseudopods delve into the ground, come up, and two of them strike at Hondir. Twenty-two to hit. All right, that is fifteen bludgeoning and twelve psychic. I need to do a concentration check for me, please. Uh, concentration would be what saving throw. Um, uh, Constitution saving throw. Okay. Sixteen. No, twelve. My bad. Twelve. Twelve. All right. Let's see. Your DC was twenty-seven half, so twenty-six thirteen. Uh, Beacon of hope fails. Uh, the next attack is a 25 to hit. That hits. 14 bludgeoning and 12 psychic. Then it will use its eat memories. Uh, Ares, make a wisdom saving throw with advantage. Well, not with advantage now. It is definitely not liking the punches that you're doing. I'm sorry, what happened? I need you to do a wisdom saving throw. Okay, sorry. I, I had stepped away for just a mm -hmm. second. Do I have advantage on the wisdom saving throw, or did Hundir lose it? Yeah, Hundir lost it. He lost I it. Got hit. I got hit twice. Yeah. Pretty big. Big chunks so of damage. To be fair, too. Those, almo those almost missed me, too. Both of those attacks. Yeah, I know. I, and I rolled so, an eight, 18 and up, so. So that's going to be a 10. Okay. All right. Uh, you have... Your die that you're minusing is a d6 now. Of course it is. And you take 46 psychic damage. I'm down. Uh, you should be up. You're at 48 right now. Nope. I have 40. Okay. <laughs> See, Ares falls down to the ground. And it is Hondir's turn. Uh, mask your wounds, fifth level. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I got a lot of spell slots to spare, folks. You do, you do. And to be fair, you guys have already chunked more than half of this creature's life in two rounds, by the way. Everyone gets 26, and thanks to Soulforge, I get 39. Thank you. 26. So, I have a quick question, DM. Shoot. Does, he, does Ares lose haste since he went down? No, you're concentrating on it. Oh, Okay. Now Ares is back up. <laughs> Ares. <laughs> he just faltered a little bit. Hey, Ares yeah. just does a kip up. Like, what happened? I, I will say that Ares, because of the haste, you're not even prone. Like, you're falling down, and you're healed, and you're already back standing up. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, Corey, you are up. Uh, Okie okay, dokie. Um, I think... I'm gonna hit it with a guiding bolt at fourth level. Go for it. Fourteen dozen, so I'm gonna burn a lucky. At the end of your turn. Thirty. Two. Thirty will hit. Another pseudopod strikes out at Miyagi, but only hits a AC nine. Yep, no. I've got 18 damage, heard. And I will attack it with my starry archer. 
You see as chunks of this heart are just falling to the ground and dissipating, melting almost into ooze. 27 hits. She gets another 16 radiant damage. This thing is looking messed up. Question for you, DM. Shoot. As we're doing damage to this heart, is it saying weird kind of um, nonsensical sayings like in Homebound? No, it's not. It's not capable of uh, speech. Ah, okay. Missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does a lot of gurgling, though. There we go. All right, Ath does strike it and does some damage. Miyagi, you're up. Okay, um, Miyagi's going to run up to uh, uh, Ares and be like, I thought you were the strong one. What happened? And then pump a six-level cure wounds into Ares. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear. I'm just waiting for the dice to roll. 35. 35 oh. healing. That's amazing. And then, as a bonus action, I'll give you a d6 as well. <laughs> Miyagi, the so. mobile medic. <laughs> so, an, an, an additional three points of healing. I will take it. And yeah. then runs back. <laughs> <That's> all <laughs> I do. All right. Ares, you're up. And this right, thing so is looking we... really messed up now. Like, it has blood spurting out of it. It's it's really jacked up. I'm going to look at it with all my rage and be like, Nobody makes Ares bleed his own blood! <laughs> go oh, for God, it. Cracks me up. Fucking love fairies. Reckless. Um, I'm attacking, okay. and then I have to subtract the D6 from this now. Yep. Uh, 26 to hit. 26 to hit. Maybe we can get you up to a D20 that you minus. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Here we go. Oh, well, it gave me the better option. Um, it's, it's cocked in D&D Beyond, but it gave me the better one. Uh, so that's going to be 13 points of damage. 13 heard. All right, next attack. Okay. Y'all see how much health this thing has? Uh, 19 to hit. 19 hits. Okay. For 15 bludgeoning. I'm not even joking. That's the exact hit points it has left. <laughs> 15. So I punch it. I punch into the heart and I rip out its heart. It doesn't have a heart. <laughs> what I happens is that you, you come down with <laughs> two ma massive strikes. And then for a third, you interlock your fingers and just do a, a big haymaker coming down. As you come down, the two parts of the this pulsating heart just split and blood i'm talking anime style blood explodes spraying up covering you but it is definitely dead as all of these veins start to stop pumping and stop moving and you can see that this organic crater is just starting to decay rather rapidly Are we in danger? <laughs> You're allow me as your DM. What do you think? <laughs> yes, we should. We should run. <laughs> <laughs> this room is decaying. You guys rush out, and you don't see anybody else in this city or in this town. There's no more these false images. It's just you. And the wind. That super creepy and extremely weird. Super creepy is an understatement. These head hurts. Uh, as soon as Ari speaks, Miyagi punches Ares. <laughs> 
Roll attack. That's a natural 20. <laughs> Ares, you, you're you gripping your head, your, your hand's in your head, or your head's in your hand right now. And you hear, you say something, your head hurts. And all of a sudden you get slapped across the face. And Miyagi's not even that tall. He can't reach your face, but he did. <laughs> That's for dropping me, you dick. Does a 31 hit Miyagi? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I don't think, I think Eris is still raging. <laughs> uh, well, I was only going to do one point, so what he did is just negated it. Oh, uh, you did two points, you got a nat 20. Yeah. 11 bludgeoning. <laughs> Miyagi, a- after you slap him and you say that, he just kicks you in the gut and you go flying 15 feet back. Does he take fall damage? No. <laughs> no more damage. <laughs> all right, all right. I, I, think we're even. I think we're even. I think we're even. Okay, so I can probably fix your head, but I need time to rest. Mass healing I did. And I consumed a lot. I wasn't <gasps> under rest either. Shouldn't we do it? Uh, who stole the ground? Raising a hand up. Should do it I mean, away from. Yeah, uh, I think we should just kind of check around and make sure. Yeah. As you hear that, check around. You hear this flap, wings flapping. Oh, look, a bird. <laughs> a red yes, dragon. except for this bird is very red. All right, we hide. <laughs> As Ixbit flies back up, a rat in his mouth that he's chewing. What you guys up to? Well, we uh, just killed whatever that thing was. is not that you, bad, honestly. You guys got in a fight without me? What the fuck? We got distracted by a rat, it seems, so... Priorities, I guess. Trust me, Ixbit, you want no part of this fight. This fight's not pretty, it's not. It, it's very weird. You look yes. hurt. You want a rat? Uh, I do. I do want a rat. He tosses you a rat. I bite into it. <laughs> it's yeah, disgusting. Him. <laughs> I've had worse in circuits. <laughs> and Hamdir, what were you saying? I was going to say, I unless you like I'm pulsating hearts, Ixpid. Oh, hearts are yummy. Missed. Hearts are I yummy. Can, I can imagine that would actually be right up his alley. Man, I haven't. Huge. I haven't had um, heart bolognese in a while. I no, miss that. Unless you, unless you want to go in there and take a look at all the decaying stuff, I think you're out of luck. Nah, I'll just wait till one of you die. I'm sorry. <laughs> all too soon? That's kind of fucked, Xpit. <laughs> but only a little bit. I think, to be fair, he's been kind of fucked since you met him. Kind of fucked since I met all of you. Well, to be fair, you were kind of fucked before, too. <sighs> you got a point. I think at some point, all of us got fucked in some way. Yeah, I was gonna say, let's just agree that all of us have our levels of fucked upness, and... We can use one of these old houses to take a rest in if we really need it that badly, or we can keep going. I mean, there. You said you defeated the thing. Why don't we just rest here? That does not seem smart. At least inside a building, it'd be a little safer. I mean, if you're looking for somebody, would you look in the most obvious place? Of course not. So this is the most obvious place, and this is the best place for us. My logic is sound. I mean, we're not Let an insight check for Xbit to see if it's really Xbit and not some weird brain thing. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, your head is kind of screwy. That's don't forget me. To... I totally believe it's Xbit. Don't forget <laughs> to minus the D6. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Maybe it'll be really bad. Yep, that's a two. <laughs> <laughs> He's Xbit. I think he gave you a rat. He's growing on you. Yes. But whatever y'all decide. 
We rest right in chamber with dead heart. No, I, I, I don't agree with that one. Why you gotta kick so hard? Um, can we Thank just? You. And Bianca was set up this whole time. He's been sprawled out like heart. <laughs> You want to help me, No, no, I'm, I'm fine. You don't look fine. I, I'm good, I'm good. Um, so, can we just take a nap somewhere? One of these That's houses? I, I, yeah. I, I found a decent one. A, plus, if there's, like, any, like, missing hole in the roof, I think if there's enough, like, scattered wood, I could put it back, actually. Well, we were at that shop where we got the jeweler's kit. That seemed mm -hmm. to be pretty innocuous. Is that what you mean, Xpit? Absolutely. The shop. You guys make your way back to the shop. I found you finally started working. <laughs> Just when we don't need it anymore. I know, right? Just when we don't need it. And you guys are able to set up Barricade yourselves inside this shop. Who is doing watches while you take a long rest? I'll do uh, first watch. Okay. Do you first. want to do it with someone or do you want to do it by yourself? I don't care. Doesn't matter. I was going to say, considering what happened last time, I think it's best to split Ares and Ath. Make sure they don't do it together. <laughs> Ath will be like, no. You guys let someone in the camp right on Cory, put a sign on my back, and put a squirrel tail near Meowgi. What well, honestly, whose fault is that? That you slept right but, through being rolled over with a sign put on your back. It, you two were supposed to watch the camp! <laughs> but you didn't die. Point, you didn't die. At some point, you have to take personal responsibility for being gullible. <laughs> Why aren't you taking personal responsibility right now, then? Oh, I'm taking personal responsibility as Ath grabs Ares' hand and they go up the stairs. Oh, great. <laughs> you brought it up. That's not what I meant by responsibility, but whatever. <laughs> we'll keep upstairs safe. <laughs> Good grief. At one point in time, you guys do hear a wooden bed breaking. So, little plumes of dust from the three of us. Rafters. <laughs> so... Corey, go ahead and roll your perception check for your watch. Doki. And then Corey and Miyagi, go and re-roll your dailies, wheel and woe, and your potents. Or, uh, yeah, potent. Portent. Potents. Oh, poor Corey. <laughs> I saw uh, that. That's a natural I'm one. Gonna I'm going to do a lucky. <laughs> All right, your last lucky for the day. Yep. Well, I'm going to rest anyway, hopefully. Exactly. So. Hey, if I learn anything, Lucky is fantastic. Oh, Lucky is one of the best feats there is. Oh, we, had a half, we also had a halfling rogue who had Lucky by default. Yep. 27. 27. The only thing that occupies your mind as you're keeping your watch is your eyes cross over that red star. And it's slightly larger. Still... You have to strain to see it. But it's just an unknown. And that bothers you in the sky. This isn't right. And that concludes your watch. Right, before I go to sleep, I'm going to like put it on my map. You know, it's just each time it's a little bigger, I'm just going to like draw, you know, that a circle around it. Mm -hmm. So so you could just track the track how big. It okay. Changing. You can see it is. The first time you saw it was about a month ago, and it is barely bigger than what it is now. So if it continues at this rate, a couple months maybe. So who's got second watch? Meowgi does. Meowgi, roll your perception check. Woo! This is gonna be great. <laughs> Twenty. 
20. During your watch, you start to hear coming from a dark corner in the room. Remind uh, me, do you have dark vision? I think I do. I don't think Tabaxi's get it. It says on my character sheet, I do. Dark vision, 60 feet. Alrighty. So what do you do? Tabaxi's would get it. They're kitty cats. I'm going to slowly walk over to where I hear that sound. Okay, make a stealth check for me. Oh, uh, yeah. Stealth, guys. That's my thing. Y'all already know. Here we go. 16. 16. All right. You slowly... It's, it's a sound that's coming from the floor, and you have a cupboard right in front of you, like a, an armoire. Uh, where is Ixpit? Sleeping on your bedroll. Um. Okay. Roll another perception check for me. Okay. Perception. Roll, roll low. <laughs> My lowest one is a twenty-one. So I got a 22. Okay. Alright. Good to know. Do I see anything? Do you see what I've described to you? Okay. Um, it does not gleam any additional information. And the sound's still coming from it? It suddenly stopped. Now... This is just because I'm dumb. What is an armoire? <laughs> it's like a dresser, but standing up. It has double doors that open up, and it has drawers underneath. Okay. I'm going to open it. <laughs> you open the mimic. Oh, no. <laughs> just kidding. You open it up, and you see a rat that's inside that looks at you all scared and starts running away. That's what you heard. You heard a rat chewing down. <laughs> Do I see what he was chewing on? It looks like some um, an herb pack. It's part of a healer's kit. Mm. You can now ha add a rat chewed healer's kit to you <laughs> if you'd like. I'm gonna, I'm so gonna you take get it. and you get botulism, and, you know, the plague at the same time. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna take it and. Stealthily put it next to Han Deer's head. <laughs> yep. All right. Next watch. Who is it? I'm gonna assume that's Han Deer, since Ares and Athen come downstairs. They're getting Ares another workout in. <laughs> All right, Han Deer, you wake up and you have a chewed. Miyagi wakes you up and you have a chewed healer's kit next to your head. Hey, um, uh, this was near you. I I dozed off while I was uh watching. Sorry. Expert chew this or something? Hey, uh, I, I don't know. I rolled terribly. <laughs> on dear, with your passive insight, my you, my you, passive insight's quite high. You <laughs> you see him like trying to. You see Miyagi trying to hide a smile. He's like grinning and he can't help it. I'm glad. Oh, there goes your camera. Sorry, I just I had to fix it. A dumb joke, huh? Uh, uh, um, I thought it'd be funny. Yeah, I did it. It was some rat, actually. I'm gonna whisper to Miyagi. Next time, try to try to hide your smile. It makes it obvious. Noted. <laughs> Noted. All right. Hey, I uh, tried to pull joke pranks on my dad all the time. He always found out. 
All right, Hondir, roll for your perception check. Perception! Uh, where is it? Right here. 22. 22. All right, the night goes by without incident. You all wake up. Miyagi, when you wake up, you put your hand on the ground to lift yourself up. You put your hand in something, and it hurts. Oh? There are 12 acorns forming a line to you. You put your hand on one of them. Oh, oh dear. Why did you do this? Where would I get acorns in an abandoned town? I don't know, trees? Algi, this wasn't me. Sure, I could have done the easy thing and get payback, but no. Hey, something doesn't add up, though. What was the first thing that spawned near you? Something tells me they're all connected in some way. Think about it. Second night was a squirrel's tail. Right? Acorns. Don't forget the buttons. That's what I meant, the buttons. And fingernails. Can I make a religion check to see if this is some kind of omen of sorts? Absolutely. That is a 10. Nothing like this. You've never heard anything like this. The messed up part is that one of your party knows what it is. Wait, do I notice or are you just saying this out loud? I'm just saying this out loud. Okay. One of your party absolutely knows what this is. Do they know they know it? Probably not. <laughs> but they called it months ago. Anyways, that's a secret for later. Can someone get Aries an app from upstairs? They are walking down the steps as we speak. Oh, what a restful evening. These upstairs is safe and secure, but I wouldn't rest on that bed. Sounds like you broke it. Yeah, broke it. Smashed it. That's, the point is it is, it is non-functional. Aries did not break it. I did. <laughs> Still, you both broke a bed. You're lucky this town's abandoned. But you missed it. There were acorns in reality this morning. Ah, that reminds me of a secret that I had called months ago. <laughs> <laughs> the cat. Let me rephrase this. One of your party members, players, knows what it is, not the character. I was about to say, I have no clue. I'm going through my notes like... Oh, it's you, Josh. You're the one who called it. Oh my god, thank <laughs> you. It's not something you would have taken a note on, though. Ugh. Anyways. Fuck. You guys are about a day's travel out by foot, if you'd like. To go to the Spectrum Observatory. We can start making our way to the observatory if we like. Hopefully we can find some good fried water at least actually can i even do that i don't think i can you can you have to spell create water create or destroy water oh yeah but like do any of us even have a container actually, sure you have wine skins but creates a lot of gallons of water is the problem are there empty barrels here that don't look disgusting do an investigation check for me my investigation is on point with my plus one. By the way, you no longer have any of your minuses. Doesn't matter because I have a. F I rolled a five. <laughs> Wasn't there a big barrel full of nasty fish? Oh yes, there was. Didn't the guy take it? He did. To the weird well, building I with the dead plants. And the bar. I mean, we could go back to the bar. I'm sure there's stuff there. With oh, your yes. five, Aries, you take about two hours, but you find three barely used barrels that are not disgusting. I love that the party just waited for two hours while I searched for barrels. Well, I'm assuming they had breakfast, stuff like that. 
Aries is, is just being Aries. Well, I can carry a barrel, possibly two, as we travel. Athwell mentioned, yes, you need to regain your fluids. <laughs> Let's put a barrel in front of me. I put a barrel in front of Hundia. And why don't you go find a lid if, you, if Aries insists on carrying this whole thing? Or we can do the smart thing and just fill out water skins. I'll be back in two more hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, level one, create water in the barrel. Sounds good. You guys have plenty of water skin. Plenty of pure drinking water. Josh, you won't find it in your notes. I'm telling you. I'm looking. I, I promise I'm you. Looking. I promise you, you will not. Was it a joke I made? Yep. Was it a Oh my gosh. Yeah, no. Now, yep. All right. Okay. So, a part of me wants to go check on that crater in the inn before we head out. Okay. Right. Okay. You guys head back to the end to where the flesh tunnel was, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. And it is all decayed. <laughs> there is nothing but black marks on the wood, like remnants of sludge or bile or something. Uh, but you're free to roll an investigation check if you'd like to search the area. Yes, I'm gonna sure. sure. I will. That's three of us that are doing it. Um, no. uh, yeah, I'm stupid, so... I'm going to use guidance on myself. Okay. For investigation. I gotta roll wheel wool. Hold on. That is that, and then I add a d4. Ah, I got wheel. Total of 17 for Hondir? 17, Hondir. You see one thing that shines as the light hits it. On the ground um, is a rectangular red gem. I'm just going to crouch down, pick it up, and inspect it. It looks like a red gem, possibly a ruby. Nice. Weird to see one of these, <laughs> let alone here. It Does is, it look dirty at all? It, magic on it. it is uncut. It is, there is some goo, dried goo on it. It just, it seems awful coincidental that, like, we just fought a big red heart and now there's, like, a gem. Me, uh, Miyagi, you know press dissertation, right? Does that work on objects? I can, do you want me to clean it up or something? Just to be sure we got an actual ruby and not some well, weird thing that's been hiding markings under this dried goo. Do we... Can we, like, check and make sure it's not, like, magic or anything? If you give me 20 take... minutes, I can figure it out. I can I do it in... It. Yeah. I don't want to bring it with us if it's something that's gonna... Well, plus, like... we can secure this room anyway, since there's only looks like to be one entrance. Ritual cast detect magic. It's not magical. <clears throat> but ritual cast identify. <laughs> identify doesn't gleam anything. Um Handir, in your hand every so often while you're holding it though, you do feel a pulse. Mm, don't like That's it, don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. <laughs> what do you got detect good and evil? <laughs> I, I think I do actually. You should, you're a cleric. <laughs> it's your whole shtick. <laughs> no, that's a paladin's whole shtick. Yeah, let me let me see if I can claim anything from it. Let me double check to see if I have it first. I didn't prepare my spells while resting like an idiot. Don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. <laughs> You're really into the body horror stuff, aren't you, Heidi? No. <laughs> I am not. Good and evil. It would take me 10 minutes, so. That's I, fine. I just spent 20 minutes, so go ahead. You cast the tech good and evil. This is what you see. There is a sentience about this stone. 
and it has a dark shadow over it. But what's surprising you is that there's also a small, very minuscule shadow of clouds forming around Miyagi's shoulders. What? What? Uh, Miyagi is a demon. Miyagi is a demon. <laughs> Ixpid has shadows all over him. The shadows on Miyagi, it's almost as if someone's behind him holding his shoulders. And then you see the cascade down his back. And there's a good concentration around his waist before it dissipates. Why are you looking at me like that? I mean, is, mm. is everything okay? Uh, I think we should be asking you that question. Well, Hondir's yeah, the only one who knows this right Hondir's now. Hondir's the only one. Let, let's get out of here. I just want to make sure it's not on this place first before I say anything. Do you take the stone? I'll take it with me. Okay. Good to know. You guys Look start reading our future BBEG. <laughs> you guys start traveling outside of town. You have to cross the bridge over to get to another forested area. And then you have to make a left hand turn to start heading west towards the Spectrum Observatory. Is there any conversation so, on the travel? I guess as we're walking, I'll describe what I saw around Miyagi. Who? Uh, I guess the party, if they want to listen, unless Ares and After Two now by holding hands, skipping down the down the path. Uh, we don't. Hey, skip. We're hey cool. thank you for the subscription, Aquatark. I definitely appreciate that. Subscribe for twelve months. Amazing. Thank you. That's awesome. Amazing sauce. Holy crap! We've been doing this for a year. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> It got really quiet for a second. I was like, "Yeah." So, We're waiting for the uh, for the RP to kick off, where we learn that you're a demon. Oh. Do you when I feel I... any different, Miyagi? Hmm. No. It feels like something is trying to grip you, though. I'd say what? Because I'm not even exactly sure what it was. Hundir has been talking to me a lot. Hundir, I would like you to do a. Do? I would like you to do a wisdom check, Hundir. Wisdom check. Yeah. Okay. And then go ahead and repeat what you said there, Miyaki. Oh, Kairos has been um, talking 21. to me a lot. Hundir, you remember that the shadows on his shoulders, and the ones that um, kind of congealed around his waist were of a slightly different tint. One of uh, the one around his waist had a almost a sickly purplish tint to it. So one shadow was definitely some sort of purple. That would be the one around your waist for some reason. You don't wear the drakes on your shoulders. I don't know what those shadows could have been on your shoulders. You were saying about Kairos. Yeah. Um. About that. Um. It's. It's nothing. Don't. Don't worry. I'm. I'm okay. I'm fine. What has he been saying to you, Miyagi? Because this is clearly affecting you. It's it's nothing. It's it's okay. Gonna make us worry, Miyagi. That's the concern. Right now, I am okay. Um, he's just 
been talking to me every few days or so. Here and there. Is there any reason why? Given what's been going on with Leandra. He actually helped with Leandra. A helped, little bit. Helped how, exactly? So you know how I backtalked her a little bit? Yeah. She had an like, almost infinite voices screaming, a voluminous noise in my head. Hmm. And he blocked it out. So... It sounds like the only good thing that's come from this news is that Kyrus and Leandra aren't on the same side. And now... Is that all that's been bugging you? Or is there more to it, you feel? I've been... You know, I've read that book for a little bit. Um... Where is that book, by the way? I think it's in my bag. Okay. I never got it back, so you still have it, yeah. You or Corey have it. I don't have it. I would say it's in Miyagi's bag, then. So... Possibly. It's... I, I don't know what's going on. That's why we're going to read a whole bunch of books and figure out a whole bunch of stuff. I suppose that is one thing that's positive to look out during this journey. Yeah. I guess you could say that. Always look on the bright side of the forge, never the underside. If it's because if it's dirty, you got to clean out your secrets. DM, um, can I roll an investigation check? Four. I want to look in Miyagi's ear and see if I could see Cyrus. Cyrus, sure. <laughs> roll. I you think see, Cyrus. For some reason, I think Yu-Gi-Oh. Ares comes up to you. Puts one hand on top of your head to turn it. Other what hand opens up his do? ear. Your ear. I rolled a seven. Uh, <laughs> he's got some earwax in there. <laughs> Aries, so, will you let him go? One second, home theater. And I'm going to spare you guys the actual yelling, but I'm going to yell in Miyagi's ear. Leave him alone! <laughs> <laughs> Does anything happen? <laughs> Miyagi's now deaf. Miyagi <laughs> is, grips his, his ears, definitely. There, I help. Are you okay, Miyagi? <laughs> He's fine. What? So that's just Cyrus leaving his head. He's fine. <laughs> Do you need me to fix... I'm not going to point to my ears. Do you need me to fix your hearing? <laughs> There's a little uh, ringing, but you're fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> And it's about this time that you guys see are exiting the forest. And you can see a slight incline up on this cliffside, a large building that has a tremendously large telescope pointing out up into the sky and small buildings surrounding it. There is a wooden fence defending the small town. You see two guardsmen standing out in front. Uh, I shall go calmly approach them and go like, hello. Um, Great. My, ah. my Greetings. How can we help you? We're just travelers on our way to the old observatory. Ah, well, then I assume that you have uh, the entrance fee for entering the observatory. I need to make an insight check or is my passive insight good? Not for that. And your passive insight's good, but it sounds like he is asking about payment. Payment to get inside the observatory? I didn't realize people were still here. Oh, yes, of course. We have scholars here. Um, This is actually our first time here. Um, oh. Could you just... 
Yes, we, we've heard so much about all the higher learning, all the books, the knowledge, and I myself am a fellow scholar, well, want to be. Um, how much is the payment fee? Oh, well, the payment fee is a book, of course. The rarer, the better. The more desirable the book, the more permissions you have inside. Algi. Mm. <laughs> Can I have oh. that manual I bought at the shop? Oh. Are, are you sure? Algi, the requirements for that are something we're not going to get in quite some time. Uh, okay. But I, I whispered to him, you can take that scroll out if that's what you're concerned about. I've already taken it out. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to get the materials required for it, so I'll see if it, that's good, okay? Uh, okay. I know how much you love your collection, so... Well, you all are welcome to come into town. It's just you would give this over to the headmaster at the observatory. Whatever oh, you're... okay. We have a town around the observatory. Very good. I thought it was just random observatory in wood. This is like, very exciting. Well, no, Do we have, have Ale, any... of course. Do they happen to have a name so we know who we're looking for? Uh, Headmaster Grease. Headmaster Grease. Is that spelled like actual kitchen grease or like the country grease? No, for player, no, no, player no. clarification. Uh, for player cl cl uh, clarification, think of the most pompous way to spell it, and that's how it's spelled. <laughs> oh, the musical, got it. H-R-I-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. With a capital or a, a silent X. And that's with an apostrophe. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be fucked up. <laughs> oh. oh, can you give us a couple of directions around town? Then we're kind of new here. We just came from some old abandoned town, actually. Ah, oh, well, um, well, we have an inn here for we do get some travelers every now and then, scholars, sages, so on. Uh, it's pretty reasonably priced at um, it's three gold a night, but it's pretty plush. Uh, and that does come with a meal. Uh, and besides that, we have a couple little, you know, seamstress, uh, fishmonger, a thatcher. Uh, the town really isn't all that. It's really built for just support of the observatory. Uh, we do have caravans coming in here every other week with supplies. I mean. And, and what is your name? Oh, my name is Armand. Armand? Um, this is... This lovely lady, um, is Cory. This hunk of a man is Handir. And the two very strong, impressive, and quite intimidating, uh, is Ath and Ares. Myself, I'm Miyagi. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. Ah, pleasure to meet you, too. Hey, big man. You should come by the inn sometimes. We get, get a little uh, little fighting thing going on every now and then. Eddie's is totally there. <laughs> I mean, we could head to the inn now if you guys are hungry or whatnot. Well, what time of day is it? Uh, it's... I would say you guys took most of the day traveling, so it's it's before dinner time, but... The observatory is open at all times. And I assume there's no caravans at all? Nope. no care. Well, there is a caravan in town right now. Uh, looks like they may be waiting to go out uh, in the morning. Mm. Dropping off supplies. I would suggest that you uh, announce yourself to the headmaster and uh, present your gift. And if it's good enough, then you guys can gain access. Okay. okay. I would say Shall. it's probably late afternoon for time period. Okay. So, late like afternoon? just a, a couple hours after lunch. Should we go to the observatory first and then get some food, or how are you all feeling? I think we go to observatory. Yes. I think we go introduce ourselves um, and go from there. All right. Works for me. Sounds good. Eddie's wants to see the mm. big telescope. <laughs> you guys I didn't know you knew such a word 
Walk I've up been to them. Practicing the... for last eight hours. Sorry, Burn. That's the last hour. <laughs> no, nope, no. Nope. Feel free. I would rather you get. I want you guys to feel free to fill in time with RP. I love it. You guys approach the largest structure here. This building is about four stories tall. It is the only stone building here. Every other building here is, they're not ramshackled, but they're definitely made out of wood. They have some replacement wood in there, some reclaimed wood. Uh, so it's a little bit more roughing out, except for the end. The end you see is three stories tall. Um, and it has very fine curtains um, in the windows. You see it's very clean around the area. Approaching the steps to the observatory, you see three more guards. These in full plate mail with halberds. Two of them, as you approach, cross their halberds in front of the large double doors, and one of them approaches you. Before they approach, can I roll an insight check to see if they're real and not heart people? Sure. Roll an insight check. <laughs> not heart people. Crap, it was a 19 and it rolled over to a 1. So not 1. Uh, Do you swear you see a red tentacle coming out of one of their feet? I'm going to go to Corey. Be careful. I think they're illusions. Illusions? How do you mean? Oh, there goes I... Heidi. Oh? <laughs> oh, I shut my camera off for a sec. Okay. I'm still here. And I like those people in the invisible village. I don't think they're real. Uh, I'm going to try to inconspicuously poke one. Just uh, to see. No, no, maybe don't. Too late. I'm going to try to inconspicuously poke one. Make a sleight of hand check. Yay, come on, plus two. <laughs> That's a ten. As you very calmly and inconspicuously in your mind, walk up to the guard that's approaching you. You stick your finger out and poke him in the chest. He looks down. Excuse me! Sorry, no offense. It's just we've been through a whole thing with a village full of people that weren't people, but they were like weird aberration of ghosts. And we just had to make sure you were real. You're very real, and might I say very buff. Not as buff as Ares, of course, because, I mean, who is? Ares! Who <laughs> brought the village <laughs> idiot here? Uh, he... That is fair. Ares He's very dim-witted. He's more so an entertainer he... at, the, at a carnival. So what do you want? Uh, we are here to see Headmaster Grease, if possible. We're supposed to make some payments. Um, That's correct. Entry. What do you have? Um. Hey, I thought Armand told us to give it to Headmaster Grease. Yes, he might have said that, but I don't bother the Headmaster until I know you have something good. I will. On dear, um, shall I? Sure. I will pull out the. Book he holds into... the manual for crafting golems. Yeah, he hold out his hand and give it to him. Starts to flip through it. Hmm. This might do. Stay here. Okay. And he takes the book and goes inside. Now the waiting game. I hope he's trustworthy and isn't just going to take off the book. A few moments go by. A few more moments. You hear the guards that have been left are snickering a little bit. That's so funny. We were just wondering if... Uh, you know, you go good with a side of mashed potatoes. <laughs> I can safely say the last thing that tried to eat me disagreed with that, sadly. <laughs> a few moment, more moments go by. Till the doors open up and you see an elderly male walk out, flowing robes, very large, poofy hat, uh, hair cut 
extremely short, but gray, definitely gray. His he is utterly what's the word I'm looking for? Meticulously groomed. You see his cubicles on his hands that he holds out in front of him, crossed uh, his fingers interlaced. Are he's definitely spent some time on personal grooming. And it might these be the the group who uh, decided to come to my observatory? Yes, sir. Yes, well, sir. I must say, this is and he's now opens up his hands. You see, he's holding his manual. This is a fine addition to the library. I do thank you for that. Uh, I believe I would be able to let you in for an hour with this. Unless you have, you, unless you have any more uh, lovely tomes, it would be limited access, of course. That's up to you, Miyagi. At this point. Okay. Um. We have to learn. Don't do it. What about this? And I will pull out Draco Nobilis Sisidictus Uictus, the the dragon book. The dragon book. <laughs> and has it ah. ah, yes, this is nice. This would actually make us have a complete set. A complete set, you say? Oh, dear. Oh, yes, that's for our top tier donators, of course. I think this will allow you enough. Please, come in. Sounds good to me. As you guys enter, you see, even in the foyer of this building, there are nothing but books. As I said, this is a five-floor building. And in the very beginning of this building, it goes five floors up. There's no additional floors. It goes that high. And it is filled with tomes and scrolls. He leads you yeah, through it. And is never seen again. <laughs> so you know when cats get excited, they sort of like flish and flick their tail. That's what you see. You see, as you guys are gone in and out of a couple rooms, you go into an extremely large room that has a skeleton much larger than all of you hanging from the ceiling. It is top to wall. Books, scrolls, globes. You see a couple people working in here. This can be your area. I will come and get you in... Well, I will have a guard come and get you in two hours. Enjoy. So we bought ourselves two hours of time? Two hours of time. There is parchment and ill and ink for you to use for copying if you wish. You are not allowed to take any books out. Do you perhaps know someone who can help our friend find a specific book on a subject? I might have an intern who is free. Would you kindly send them our way, please? Of course. See, as he departs, he talks to a couple people on his way out. Miyagi, you have to put your tongue back in your mouth. <laughs> Stop drooling on the books. And you guys are just roaming around right now. So, you all, we should probably come up with an idea of what we're trying to research with two given hours. Imagine Corey is going to find a book on the Red Star. That's why I asked if he had someone that could help Corey find that book. It's funny that you said that, because Corey, with your passive perception... Something sparkles and draws your attention. You see a book that has diamonds in it in the form of constellations. Very similar to what you do to your own body. I thought I was the only one that did that. This Only than what? Interesting. See that book over there? 
I look at it. Yes. The diamonds and constellations. They're shaped exactly like yours, are they? Yeah, I didn't know anyone else actually did that. I. Perhaps that's the book you're looking for, then. If not, it's really freaky, because... I mean, I, mean... I just started doing that because it's easier for me to keep track of things when I don't have to worry about losing, you know, a physical map. So, it's really strange. I am told that I am here to help you. Oh, Lord. Oh, there. <laughs> you see a eight-year-old human male with the standard monk cut in brown linen robes. I am Daniel. How can I help you? I think, Corey, you found the book you want, yeah? Yeah, I think this must be it. Do you have any other books that are along these lines? Constellations? Well, that one, no, because that's a diary. Oh, what was oh. diary? Uh, it was uh, Druid's Diary. Uh, I haven't read it myself, but it, it had to deal... Uh, I think it's called The Celestial Sea. Interesting. Well, I think I shall be using my time with this book. That's right. okay. But I know my friend Miyagi has some areas that he is interested in researching. Um, Do you happen to have anything on... Elder gods, something along the lines of... Oh, yes, that's very restricted. No, you cannot have those. Okay, you um, those. Do, you happen, do you happen to have anything on silver dragons? I believe so. Uh, anyone that mentions um, Christandathelion? I do not know. Okay. But I can show you to the dragon section. I would appreciate that. Uh, he leads you to an area. Uh, it's around a corner of a bookcase. And as soon as you cross that corner, you see all types of books with uh, depictions of dragons. You see what looks like a dragon skull. And you can immediately say that's a black dragon skull because of the horns that come out on the side. Um, you see vials of different liquids, uh, some gases. Even there is, it's a smaller-ish section, like three bookcases wide, but it is nothing but dragons. Corey, you go in front of that book, The Celestial Sea, and it just, it's calling to you. definitely going to curl up to read it. As you pull it off the shelf, the first couple words that you read. Let me pull this up. One moment. Ignore me eating my big ass taco. <laughs> At least That's one of us is said. eating dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Just my head. Inside the first flyleaf, on the first flyleaf, you see the words, the diary of Quen Alaro, circle of the stars. And this is a representation of of my time living amongst those same stars. The first couple entries that she writes about is how her circle immediately experienced a drop in power. She talks about her life and she and she talks about home, where you're from. 
She talks about her piercings. She has the same dermal piercings that you have. And then she speaks about the day that everything changed. They had lost a huge power, a tremendous amount of power in their circle. She said the stars themselves reformed and shown different depictions of constellations that were unfamiliar that they could not connect with and draw the same power from. Pause on you for a second. Aries, you end up chatting. You see this guard that's standing inside and he just like gives you a bro nod at you. Okay. And then he comes up. You wouldn't be happy to looking for a little bit of uh, fun on the side. There is never a time that I am not looking for side fun. Well, we've got a little fighting ring. Going on at the inn down below. You it? been in a couple fights before? Been in plenty of fights, and I hold up the uh, the dragon tooth necklace I have. Like I, I squat this baby from Black Dragon that was attacking friend in cave. Hmm. What's your name, friend? They call me Ares Don Slavo, the strong man of the circus. The champion of Gord, Slayer of Dragons, and Layer of Ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe you'll be the one that can shut his mouth up. We have this Minotaur here who's it's kind of an asshole, and he's been wiping the floor with the fighting ring. You think you're down for it? Tell me more about this Minotaur. And you see the <laughs> focus on Ares' face. <laughs> uh, I don't know. His name's Car Venom. Um, it's a real prick, honestly. I am very interested. <laughs> All right, well, come by tonight. I'll make sure you get in a fight. I might even put a couple gold on you. That would be smart bet, friend. All right. Meowgi. You see anything that you want to be answered about dragons is here, you, th you think. Deep. What are you looking for? Silver dragons. Anything and everything on silver dragons. You start compiling a bunch of books, and right now you're sitting on the ground. You have about 20 books opened up at different places that talk about silver dragons, and you're going back and forth and starting to take notes. Okay. Back to court. What are you doing? Reading. Okay. <laughs> you read a passage. I heard screams. And the bombardment. It sounded as if the city was under attack by a massive force. But when I ran out, when I went outside, I just saw people yelling, screaming, fleeing, and looking up. I looked up myself and I couldn't see anything. It was then I rounded a corner and I saw it. Something floating not flying, but floating in the sky. A large ship with multiple tentacles coming out of the front that were coming down. And as the tentacles struck people, they dissipated into ash. One struck me. And I found myself stuck. Restrained in a dark room, the only light coming from what looked like an oversized cauldron, but not of metal.
something swimming inside of it. For the rest of you, as you see Ath... I think that that stupid stone was, like, related to everything. Red, <laughs> red, pulsating. Oh, shh. As you see, Corey reading the book, a lot of wind blows in this room. Miyagi, you're instantly flustered because it's losing all your places. I would call Hondir over. Actually, you don't do anything. I don't. Because as soon as you guys see that wind, you see Corey turned into dust. and float away and before any of you can take an action every single one of you is transported and this is where we're going to end our session i know it's a very short session tonight but there's a reason because each and every one of you is now restrained inside this room inside of a nautilus for those of you who don't know what a Nautilus is, it is a Mind Flayer ship. Jam. We will be not playing our game next Monday, but join us the Monday after as this group goes to Spelljammer. Yeah! Oh, yeah. You guys will be experiencing the past in Spelljammer on that on our next game. Fuck yeah. So, bitches, gripes, complaints, comments, questions answered. I know it's a very, very, very short session, but we are at that point, and I don't have the material to keep on going for right now, and I gotta get ready for work. But I promise you, you it will teasing, be... You're teasing some new material that isn't even out yet, my guy. Of course we're not prepared. <laughs> exactly. So, we're gonna start with Aries. Uh, this was fun. Uh, very short, very uh, sweet. I got to kick me algae, so it's always a good time. And you got to be the layer of ass, so hey. Yep. That's back to back. Okay. You, you've you kicked Ixpit and now Mishogi. And I will say that your characters are time stopped here, so you'll get a chance to fight Carvenom again. Nice. Nice. Next, mm. we're going to go with Sean, and of course that gem is nothing at all. I'm sure it's going to lead to something, but like, who knows what? Yep. Also, I can't really say much else because it's getting ridiculously hot in here because we just got another heat advisory. Oh, jeez. Did you get those um, uh, air coolers that, you know, use water and ice to blow cold air on you? It's like a humidifier, but it, it doesn't really do what they say, but it's better than nothing. I got something in, like, the living room I can use since, okay. like, we're ending early tonight. Uh, next, we're going to have Corey. Uh, what the fuck? That's all I know. <laughs> Yike. I, I can't wait. I, I have some good good ideas for the Spelljammer stuff. For a little bit of a, just a break in this, but you get to see it, but it will tie into the story. And last but not least, we have Miyagi. You killed my girlfriend. <laughs> you talked to me with knowledge. <laughs> Do I have to suffer? <laughs> no, but it was a great session. Um, I'm glad that you told Hondir, like, oh, there's... You can hear things, because I was, I was about to cast the tech thoughts on that stone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was... Um, the stone will have some implications. We'll, we'll see what happens. I freaking knew it. <laughs> knew it. Hey, look, we all got to wield something dangerous at some point. Exactly. You all got to make a mistake you, at one point. You had a mini beholder, Heidi. Had. Had. Ate it. So. Technically, uh, Xbit has it. This <laughs> is. Or he had it temporarily. I don't know what his system <laughs> runs like, but I would assume it's gone now. <laughs> yeah, it's probably as past. <laughs> so, 
Let's see. Like gum that's there for like seven years. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do a quick raid. Um, there we go. We got one D and D channel. So please join us again, not next Monday, but the following Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will definitely have a longer session for you. This I promise. Have a good night. Night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. And we are off. I want to play a plasmoid. Okay. <laughs> I do not even know like, what this is. Uh, oh, oh, I saw oh. some of that. Can I, can I play a Griff? Can I play a brief cleric? Yes, no. you can. Oh, man. I'd like to be a plasmoid monk. I saw some of that. <laughs> um, I'm surprised nobody called. It. When you said Spelljammer, then I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> nah, because I got spoiled this morning about some of the Spelljammer stuff. Um, one of our players is like, I want to poke the solar dragon. Hmm. Um, I but want yes. a fucking Eldritch Lich. That's what I want to do. Uh, no. <laughs> That's what you're facing. <laughs> no, I guess. You guys are way ahead of me. I haven't not looked into Spelljammer at all. So. I'll, I'll just, <laughs> can I throw in a photo of an Eldritch Lich? Lich, yes. or do you want me to wait? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, do you guys... You guys know if you have a game tomorrow, right? Yeah. We do? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, uh, after session, see if Damien's also incorporating spell jammers in y'all's thing. I think everyone's going to, let's be honest. Well, it comes out on the 16th. So, um, those of you who want to create your own characters, feel free to do so, but I would like them done no later than the 20th. Um, I know Britt wants me to... Um, make their character so i'm gonna do that if you all wanted to do any and again when you come out of this we can change up your levels and your stat requirements so does anybody want to do a multi-class with the class that they have right now i don't know yet i can't decide i i can't either <laughs> i'd rather not, not break the the only indecisive person. i'd rather not break the rules of the game so i can't well, no, because what we'll do is we'll minus one point from one of your stats and add it to another one. So it's not breaking the rules. And it's not even giving you extra power. It's you're literally losing something to gain something else, you know? I'm happy with Ares as he is. 